game I like to play with my life in many ways That's what they say Here I am, a regal dog I'm a dick old dumb mascot now It's my turn, the gentle touch I'm all you, they love me so much Hey, now the story must go on Cause a lot of time is gone We must be ready continues his attempt to travel around the world in 80 days, the citizens of London eagerly await news of his progress. Rumour has it, Willie Fogg's in an Indian jail. They're saying he robbed the Bank of England on his way out of the country. All the money that we waged is lost. What's going on? I'll lose a fortune. Listen a minute, will you? The Morning Chronicle has just received this cable that says that Willie Fogg is cleared of all charges. Take heart, gentlemen. He's departed on schedule aboard the good ship Rangoon. That's right, old friends. Put yourselves at ease. Willie Fogg is at this very moment travelling through the Straits of Malacca on his way to Singapore. Willie Fogg is indeed aboard the Rangoon. And as the sturdy ship steams steadily across the shimmering China Sea towards Singapore, the newest of Mr Fogg's travelling companions, the lovely Princess Romy, is lost in thought. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Oh, huh? there she is. Hiya, Princess uh, Romy. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? Perhaps I can cheer the princess up. Oh, oh Tico. <laughs> Let no. me go. I want to talk to the no. room. Good day, princess. Huh? Oh, hello. Unless I am quite mistaken, you're thinking about your family, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. I understand. <sighs> But you'll soon be reunited with them in Singapore, so try to be of good cheer, Princess. For now, might I ask you for the pleasure of your company for a chat and a refreshing cold drink on the promenade deck? Delighted. Monsieur mm. Fogg, why don't mm. you and the Princess sit down over here? It's all ready for you. It might be a little warm, but it's better to sit in the sun than to be kept up in the stuffy cabin downstairs, eh, Monsieur? Mm. Madame, Monsieur? <laughs> Allow me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. Mm. You are a gentleman. Not at all, Princess. It is a very great pleasure. I'm your humble servant. So you're not a gentleman? Oh, I'm polite, if that's what you mean. But a gentleman? Well, I think... Hey, so... you've never been polite to me. What are you talking Tico, about, Rigodon? <laughs> I say, Rigodon, would you please get the Princess a drink? Immediately. Ah, no, you don't. It's a matter. I'm gonna get a drink for the Princess. Tico. <laughs> you're just wet. I'm gonna show you. we we'll see who the gentleman is at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> huh? Hmm. It's strange, monsieur. We're not moving. We're just sitting in the water. Really? Oh. That hmm. is strange. There isn't any wind in the sails, that's for certain. And I can't think of any reason why the captain would stop out here. And look, there's no smoke in the smokestack. That means that they've turned off the engines for some reason. Oh, I am going to the engine room immediately to find out what is going on around here. Hmm. Not only can Mr. Fogg not afford the delay, but the princess must not be kept from reuniting with her family. Thank you, Rigodon. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hello, is there anyone here? Uh, oh, oh, it is so hot. I would never want to work in an awful place like this. Oh, it must be noisy, too. Oh, no more than noise. Huh? Why don't you go back on deck where you belong? I am very sorry to have to complain, but you see, we are in a hurry, and you must start the engine back up immediately. Sorry, can't do it. So you made it like this. We just ran completely out of coal. What? How could you do that? It's not me. I'm just the engine man, you know? The fellow what buys the fuels all the way back in Calcutta. Why don't you go ask him? I meant no offense. When will we start moving again? Well, we just have to wait until the wind starts up. What wind? Uh... 
Go on. You first-class gentlemen make me sick with your awful looting ways. All right. It's up to you. Right, right. You'd have me blowing on the go. sails to make the ship go. On one condition. Go on. You stay down here. Uh, 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 what a rude man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Willie Fogg, I finally found a way to stop your attempt at going around the world in 80 days. You'll never get back in time now. <laughs> oh, Tico, do be careful. That looks awfully heavy. Don't worry. In the circus, I used to walk on the tightrope. <laughs> Here we are. kind of you, Tico. <laughs> Thank you, Tico. <laughs> what are you taking me for? I'll do anything at all for you. Uh, uh, you mm. Montebello, princess. <laughs> Very good. Ah. Mm. <laughs> ah. oh. Hey, look at on. <sighs> well, huh? there's no call. Oh, no. I'm afraid we have to wait for the wind. Sorry. Oh. Hey, look at on. I'm short enough already. Hmm. Please don't be distressed, Princess. There's no question that we'll pick up a fine wind this afternoon and arrive ahead huh? of schedule in Singapore. <laughs> I'm a warning Why you, my friend. You better get out of my chair. Hmm? I am tired. Stop bothering me. You know it is a long swim back to Calcutta. Yeah, well, then you better grow fins. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you five minutes to get out of my seat, okay? Now, let's see what time it is. <laughs> now, it's exactly 10 o'clock, you can say. I didn't warn you. Is that so? <laughs> That's so funny, eh? <laughs> Hello, what's this? A flying fish. Hey, come back here. I think you are taking a three. You think you're pretty slippery, eh? Oh. Oh. Well, oh. I think you're a mess with a mighty tico. Oh, you make me look bad in front of my princess. You're gonna be sorry. Oh. <laughs> Now you're gonna get it! You're gonna get it! Now I got you! Maybe not! Alright, that's it! No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Okay, now I'm stop fooling around. I'll have to pluck your wings, but you ain't the kind of feathers. You're gonna be sorry, fish face, and when I'm gonna get through with you, you're gonna be Chapino! You're gonna be sorry you was ever hatched! I hope you get a seasick and drown. This means a vendetta. There's only one thing to do. I'm gonna eat one of his cousins for dinner. Think, bully. There must be something we've missed. Yeah, I miss me home sweet home, and I miss me mum, and I miss me flower garden, and I miss playing darts down at the pub. All right, enough self-pity. Now, bully, we tolerate no whiners at Scotland Yard. Right, Inspector. Do you realise we're almost to Hong Kong, the last British territory, until we get to London? If we don't arrest Willie Fogg now, we may <sighs> never get another chance. The reputation of Scotland Yard will be tarnished. We'll be the laughing stocks of London. Well, bully? But what if he's innocent? What? How can he be innocent if there's a warrant out for his arrest? Eh? Answer me that. You know, sir, like when people say eh? the butler did it, but it always turns out to be eh? somebody else. Eh? Bully, did I hear you say the butler did it? Mm? Yes, sir. That's it, Bully. <coughs> That's wonderful. You're absolutely brilliant. You've stumbled upon the answer. Inspector, there's nothing on about that. I stumble all the time. Listen. <coughs> That thief Willie Fogg has a butler travelling with him now, doesn't he? And the fastest so? way to a crooked thief is through his crooked subordinates. He'll use the tactic of divide and conquer. I mean, uh, uh, divide and conquer. Humbly! Divide what, Inspector? Oh, Tico, you really should give up. You won't catch the same fish, my friend. We left him behind hours ago. No, I know he's around here someplace, and I'm gonna catch him. Well, well, that certainly is a lovely sunset. Huh? Well, yes, it is, monsieur. And what a pleasant surprise to find you on the same ship. Indeed. We nearly missed boarding, got it just in time. Schedules are so terrible. 
We also have not had a minute to rest, but I am surprised, messieurs, that we have not seen you in the dining room. Uh, yes, well, you see, I've been below caring for my traveling companion. I'm afraid he's been beastly seasick these last few days. Hmm, of course. And what is your next destination? My business has taken me to Hong Kong. Hong Kong? That's right, and as a matter of fact, what I accomplish there may well determine my future. A business deal? Well, you look like an honest and trustworthy sort of fellow. I've been chasing this deal around the world, and it looks as though I'm finally going to get the merchandise and send it back to London. <laughs> oh. hmm. Those seagulls are splendid, aren't they? And by the way, whoever is that absolutely exquisite young lady sitting over there with Mr. Fogg? Yes, isn't she charming? There's no harm in telling you. Oh. Believe it or not, she's an Indian princess. That beautiful young lady has royal blood. Oh. Royal blood, amazing. Well, hey, Rika, don't help me. I'm gonna think I got a big one. What do you want me to do? Help! Oh, hey, oh. 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 Rika, don't help me. I got it. Hey. No, I don't. You all right, Rika? Don. Oh, I don't want Fog to see me. I'd better go. Uh, What's going on? Eh? <laughs> hey, listen. Yes, Tico. The fish out of my liner was as big as a whale. Could be. Huh? Or it could be that you cut your fish hook on the bottom of the boat. What the bottom of the boat? I'm a talking to fish here. Don't you believe me, princess? Mm -hmm. See, she believes me. Oh, what's eh? that? Good show. The wind's coming up. Oh, what a relief, Mr. Fogg. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, and we <laughs> seem to be picking up speed. Hey, we're moving now. <laughs> with a good stiff breeze, we should be able to make up for the time we've lost. <laughs> Even without the engines. Oh, I hope so. Hey, the ship pushes a sail <laughs> over the ocean like a big boy. The... And so, borne along by the balmy breezes of the China Sea, the good ship Rangoon races toward her destination. Aided by a smart following wind and fair weather, she makes excellent time. And soon Mr. Fogg and his friends are sailing into the harbor of beautiful, exotic Singapore. Singapore, finally. Mr. Fogg. Why, you sound unhappy. Are those tears I see in your eyes? Tears of happiness. Are you sure there's nothing the matter? Quite sure. Let's go, Tico. Right behind you. Mr. Fogg, <laughs> the captain says we have six whole hours before we have to be back aboard the ship. Ah, splendid. It seems we shall have plenty of time to contact the authorities and locate your relatives. Wonderful. Why don't you and Tico do some sightseeing, Rigodon? With pleasure, monsieur. We'd love to, eh, Tico? You're back. Come on, let's right. go. Here I come. The game's afoot, bully. Now get up. Oh, lunchtime already? Lunchtime? If you weren't always thinking of your stomach, you'd know that Willie Fogg is about to escape with that princess. Hey, wait for me, Inspector. <coughs> the streets of Singapore are full of fantastic sights, but Tico and Rigodon have little time to enjoy them for there are errands to be run and provisions to be purchased. Rigodon, I want the Princess Romy to find her relatives, but that means we'll never see her again. Don't you know? look at it that way. She hasn't seen her relatives for a long time. She'll be so happy to see them again. I suppose <coughs> you're right. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Andiamo. I like the princess a lot. She's a real nice lady. I'm gonna miss her not having her around no more. We're all going to miss the princess, Tico, but you have to consider her future. And besides, I think she's a little bit too tall for you. There's no such thing as a too tall for Tico. I want to take her home to meet my mama. <laughs> I hope the princess likes spaghetti. Meanwhile, at the governor's mansion... Princess Romy of the Jagi family, this is an unexpected pleasure. You know my family, sir? Yes, I've known your family for quite some time, and they've told me all about you. You see, Princess, when your relatives heard about your parents, they looked everywhere for you, but their long search was in vain, I'm afraid. And then, five years ago, they received word that you'd been married to the Rajah. Then they were searching for me all these years. I wasn't abandoned after all. Of course not. Mm. Do you know her relatives' address, Excellency? I do. But unfortunately, I'm afraid they're no longer living in Singapore. They left three years ago to live in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, you say? We'll never meet. But of course you will, my dear. Oh? Please set your mind at rest. Their address is on this envelope. Oh. Princess, don't be discouraged. You'll be able to see your family in just a few days now that you have their address, and I'll gladly escort you to Hong Kong. I'm... I'm grateful. 
I have taken the liberty of ordering my personal coach to be placed at your convenience. Really? I realize you don't have much time to spend in our fair city, but at the very least you should see our lovely gardens. Singapore is rightly famous for its many picturesque sights. Mr. Fogg, all my best wishes in your attempt to journey around the world in 80 days. Thank you very much, sir. I'm so hot, sir, I think I'm gonna melt. Oh. <laughs> hey, look alive, bully, they're coming out! Huh? Oh, don't they look nice, sir? After you, Princess. Thank you. Coachman. All right, Bully, this is our huh? chance. But, Inspector, Stop we can't go. Oh, oh, oh. Where do you think you're going? I'm an English pursuitman in police of a criminal, and that man is responsible for robbing mm -hmm. the Yank of England. Really? Do you know how many times a week I hear that story? <laughs> go away! <laughs> and take your friend sir. with you. <coughs> Good day, sir. Oh. oh, no! They're getting away, uh, bully! Quickly! Right, sir. <laughs> Hurry, bully! I am, sir. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Quite. <laughs> this looks like a lovely spot. Shall we have a stroll? I'd like that. <clears throat> Princess? Oh! Oh, look! I've never seen anything like them. Oh, it's so pretty. A lovely flower for a lovely lady. So lovely as this, it takes one's breath away. Look, oh, <laughs> there. beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. hmm. oh. Hiding amongst the crowd, he's clever, but he shan't escape. Look, they're on the move again. Quickly, bully after them. Mr. Fogg and the Princess, they should be here by now. Tico. Huh? Do you know what I think? I think you have a crush on the Princess. What are you talking? I was right. There's a little light in your eye when you speak of her. You're crazy. There's no light in my eyes. The Princess is a friend of mine, that's all. You can say whatever you like, Tico, but we've known each other for too long. You can't fool me. Hey, you ain't gonna tell on me, are you? Don't worry. Look over there, here they come. Hope they had a good time. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Fogg. Princess. Hello, Princess. Mm. Oh, she's so beautiful, Rigadon. Don't behave yourself. I hope that your afternoon was enjoyable. Ciao, Princess. You find your family? No, I'm afraid not. Not yet. It seems that some three years ago, her family moved away to Hong Kong. Huh? They're not here anymore. That's why she's coming with us. Princess, shall we board? Mm -hmm. Three more days with my princess. It's a dream come true. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> I can't wait to get started. We've wasted the whole day chasing them all over Singapore, and they've come back to the ship. Here, I just thought of something, sir. That means that instead of chasing them all over Singapore, we could have just waited for them to come back here. Oh, hmm. huh? that's what I've just got through saying. Now, come all on. right, Inspector. All right, I'm right behind you, sir. So, Fog, you're on your way to Hong Kong. Well, so am I. Continuing their journey aboard the Rangoon, Willie Fogg and his companions are confident of arriving in Hong Kong in time to board the steamer Carnatic, bound for Yokohama and San Francisco. 
The ship is making excellent time, for the captain is using both steam and sail, and the weather is unusually fine. It won't be long now, Princess. Tomorrow we'll be in Hong Kong. Yes, huh? I know. Hey, what's the matter? Hey, you're gonna be seeing your family soon, Princess. You should be smiling. You're right, but I'll miss you all a great deal when you leave Hong Kong. I don't want to oh. lose your friendship. And we'll miss you very much, Princess. Well, now, I can't have you all in such low spirits, so I suggest a farewell party for the Princess this evening. We're gonna be having a party! I'm bringing the antipasto! Hmm, looks like there's going to be a storm. The sky is getting very dark. It looks bad. I think we'd better go below. It's going to get rough soon. All right. I think you're right. Quickly now. We oui, miss you. Hurry, Tico. I can't go no fast. This is too slippery. Uh... Man your stations. Man your stations. It's What's a typhoon. That isn't that marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of storms. <laughs> Don't worry, Princess. I'm a protect you. Grab on to something and hold on. Right. I'm sure this will be over soon. Right. My schedule is very exact, Captain. Mm -hmm. I am required to be in Hong Kong tomorrow evening to board the steamship Carnatic. Do you think that with the storm will be on time? Well, you won't catch the Carnatic, sir. There is no doubt the upcoming typhoon will delay us. Typhoons, you say? Just take a look at those barometers there. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they're almost off the gauge. Now, there is nothing to worry about. I've sailed in this region for many years, and the Rangoon is a good ship. My suggestion is that you return to your cabins and make yourselves as comfortable as possible. I am very sorry, Monsieur Fogg. If you do survive a storm, Willie Fogg, let's see you make it to Hong Kong without any sails. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> the daring band of travelers are in desperate straits indeed, faced with a predicament more dangerous than any they have yet encountered. The ship is being tossed and battered by the raging typhoon and may sink at any moment. And even if they survive the storm, the ship is without fuel or sails. How can they possibly reach Hong Kong? In our next episode, the lovely Princess Romy receives some shocking news about her family and turns to Mr. Fogg for consolation and assistance. Rigodon and Tico have an upsetting encounter with Inspector Dix, who wants their help in his attempt to arrest Willie Fogg. Will they remain loyal to a gentleman wanted by Scotland Yard? Be sure to join us for The Butler's Dilemma, the next episode of our thrilling journey around the world with Willie Fogg. <laughs>